Hi, this is Julie Black Peart, and I'm your host today for Health Center from Downstate Medical Center. Well, today, as you can see, I'm wearing orange, and I'm wearing orange in honor of a very special program right here at SUNY Downstate called the HEAT program. HEAT stands for Health and Education Alternatives for Teens, and I have a very special guest. The Executive Director of the program, Dr. Jeffrey Birnbaum, is here with me today, and we're going to discuss a lot of very important issues related to teens that are gay, uh, homosexual, uh, transgendered, uh, at risk for AIDS, that have AIDS or HIV. So parents, if you've got teens, get them in front of the television set because this is going to be a hot topic and we're going to give you a lot of information you really need to know. So Dr. Jeffrey Burbaum, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I'm very glad to have you today. This is very important stuff and I think that what we really need to do is just kind of make sure that we get out all the important and salient points today and just have a nice conversation about all the things we really want to make sure that teens and parents know. So why don't you start by giving us an idea and telling us a little bit about the history of the HEAT program, what it's all about just so people have an idea to start. Well, the HEAT program's been around since 1992 um, in one form or another, always based out of SUNY Downstate. We've changed our locations a couple of times over the years mm -hmm. um, given circumstances at that time. Um, we serve young people ages 13 to 24. Um, initially, we served only people with HIV or AIDS, young people with HIV or AIDS. Now we serve a lot of high-risk youth or at-risk youth um, and provide um, uh, just general family planning services for, for teenage girls, young adult women, um, irrespective of HIV status. And we run a transgender treatment program for um, transgender youth, mm -hmm. uh, also regardless of, of HIV status, although many of them do have HIV from, from that population, a very marginalized population. Um, we're a youth-friendly program, youth-focused. That's important. Um, our staff speaks in the language that young people speak in. Mm -hmm. um, we try and keep up with youth culture and mm -hmm. try and remain relevant so that when young people are coming to us, um, they'll want to come to us and they'll, they'll see that we're, we're um, uh, using language that is understandable right. to them so that health messages um, get across to them right. and, and, and that we can deliver health care services in, in a way that's acceptable to them. Yeah, you have to use that teen vernacular and you have to be able to communicate with them on a level that you're kind of like, here, you look pretty hip yourself, Dr. I try. Mom, you I try. <laughs> so I try. 20, 21 years, that's a long time. So it's, it's a good thing that this kind of service is out there for, for our teens. So let's get into some some of the different things that you're offering. Sure. Okay, so we talk about um, uh, preventive care, and some are at risk. What does at risk for HIV mean? I don't know if our audience really understands what that's all about. Well, any young person who's mm -hmm. sexually active, mm -hmm. with or without a condom, is 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 at risk. Mm -hmm. So, so um, sometimes uh, people say condoms break. That's true. That may mean that they broke. It may mean I didn't use them, but. Mm -hmm. I know I'm supposed to, so I'm going to say that it broke. Mm -hmm. um, if young people are sexually active, um, they need to know what they need to know in order to prevent mm -hmm. getting HIV, other sexually transmitted diseases, um, for the young women getting pregnant, um, et cetera. So, so um, at risk, um, some, some young people um, are engaging in more sexual activity than others. Sure. Some of them are not having protected sex using condoms. Some of them don't choose their partners as wisely as they should or sure. could. Um, so, so that's what puts young people at, at, risk. at risk. Yeah, I know this population, it's not really just something that's so pervasive right now today, but it has been, seems to me that it's been growing and building. These teens have a sense of thinking that this is not going to happen to me. And then they look at some of our icons that have come out and that, you know, people know that they have AIDS or HIV, and then they're, they've got all the money to pay for the top-notch medications and things, and they're very well, and people are living long lives with this disease now. It's not the death sentence that it used to be, but they do need to understand that they have to protect themselves at all costs, right? What are the, some of the things that we need to make sure that they know? If they're not getting it from home, or if they're not getting it at health education at school, what do we need to teach them about protecting themselves? It's not just condom use. What about um, exposure to the oral mucosa during oral sex and those kinds of things. What do they need to know about that? Well, um, one, 
they they do need to know it's not a, a death sentence mm -hmm. um, when a young person comes in and they've just been diagnosed with HIV mm -hmm. quite often you know I s I, I'll say to them, I bet you thought this was a death sentence because mm -hmm. that's typically what right. somebody feels when they're being told they have HIV. It's a sense of shock and then, oh my God, I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're trying to um, dispel that, that, that notion that, that it's a death sentence and, mm -hmm. and try and get the point across that it's a long-term chronic manageable disease quite often I'll tell them it's a life sentence yeah. um, a life sentence of medication come on look at my ugly face They'll and, understand and, and that. <laughs> hearing, hearing, hearing me um, talk to them about about their health and having mm -hmm. to come uh, to the clinic and get medical care um, so it's a life sentence in, in that way and we tell them you should expect to live a long mm -hmm. and healthy life and and you know you're 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 not losing control over that that's right. still that's still yours. Um, life is yours for mm -hmm. the taking if you if you choose to um, continue on. Right. So so changing that is one of the um, uh, big things that, that that we really have to work on. It has a downside. Well, if it's not a death sentence, I don't need to be afraid mm. of catching it. So right. it's treatable. So it's no big deal. The condom use is tantamount. And then we're also educating them, I'm sure, about other sexually transmitted infections, what we call sometimes STIs, mm -hmm. hepatitis C, protecting themselves against gonorrhea, chlamydia, herpes, HPV, which right. is human papillomavirus. So all right. these things go hand in hand. Always yeah. using condoms or abstinence is really the way that it needs to be. Right, and and you know, educating them about which ones are curable, which mm -hmm. ones are not curable. Right. Um, sometimes, like in a particular among among um, uh, young gay men, mm. there's a lot of syphilis going around. Mm. Syphilis is a very um, efficient facilitator of catching HIV if, if mm. someone is having sex with another person who has both it's a lot easier to catch the HIV if you're also catching syphilis at right. the same time so protecting themselves against against other STDs STIs mm -hmm. is extremely really important. extremely important yeah and and uh, you know another point that that you made um, you know young people by just very stage in life they're in always feel invulnerable mm -hmm not going to happen to me mm -hmm. it's not a particular generation it's mm -hmm. it's always the generation that's coming of age mm -hmm. it, it's it's part of life feeling like you're you're somewhat immortal and and the fact that any harm could come to you or that you might die one day is something that that if it's not completely outside of your your thinking it's it's way at the extreme yeah. end of, of that so 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 risk taking is actually normal for, for people of a certain age mm -hmm. and, and development. Yeah, and we have to manage it. What I think is important for them to understand too is that a lot of these diseases, HIV, the herpes, these viruses get into your body and they stay there for a long time. It could be years before they actually start to manifest themselves, could be five, ten years. So if you're at risk and you're not having careful you know, sex, got to make sure and get checked out on a regular basis. So where do they come to your clinic? What services are offered there other than just, you know, the counseling and what else what else do you have to offer? Before I say what we, what they get when they come to us, we often go to them because oh. young people don't typically go to the doctor, especially uh -huh. young guys. Okay. Um, young guys have to be in a lot of pain sure. in, in a certain part of their body for them to um, <laughs> um, come come in for the doctor. They won't get themselves checked out, whereas you know the the, the girls typically do. The girls mm -hmm. and young women typically do. So we often go out to community-based agencies where the youth already are. Okay. And um, uh, quite often, what we're bringing out to those community-based agencies is is free. Um, rapid HIV testing. So we will oh. take the testing out of the clinic. Mm -hmm. um, we would like to implement some other services as well, but but you know there's resource limitations on mm -hmm. what we can do in, in um, and staff limitations and how many people mm -hmm. we have to go out to different places. So right now we're just doing um, HIV testing in a lot of community-based locations. Um, we test hundreds and hundreds of youth across mm -hmm. Brooklyn and outside of Brooklyn as well mm -hmm. um, for HIV every year. Okay. Um, we test at Medgrevers College, we test a lot oh. of community centers, we test um, at a place called Red Hook Initiative, a lot of different neighborhoods where um, it might not be so easy for a young person to go and get themselves tested for HIV. Okay. And by coming in to get tested, 
they're, they can also be referred in for other services. Right, and the services are completely confidential when Yes, yeah, so a young person can get, in particular, around sexual health services, family planning services. A uh, young person can come in, consent for their own care, mm -hmm. Um, without parental knowledge, without parental consent, it's completely confidential. Um, we work out ways of, of accessing their insurance. Most young people are covered under some sort of um, insurance, and if they're uninsured, we fi we figure out a way to provide provide the service to them at, at low cost or, right. or or no cost. Right. Um, we'll offer we'll offer um, uh, STD screening, mm -hmm. um, family planning services treatment for, for any STDs, referrals for prenatal care for, right. for the girls when they do get pregnant. Um, and for the HIV positive population, uh, we offer them a comprehensive package of medical, mental health, social work, case management right. services. You know, f from our perspective, um, keeping a young person in school and mm. having life goals Extremely important. Is, is equally as important as whether or not they're taking their medication. Right, because it's not just the virus that you're treating, it's a whole package. How they're feeling about themselves mentally, you know, physically you want to take care of them, but you want to make sure that their minds are on track so that they can have a good future, that all of those other things are taken care of as well. Right, so, so treating the person, yes, not the disease. Yes, that's what I'm getting at, definitely treating the person, not the disease. So sometimes people contract HIV not because they went out and had unprotected sex. They contract it because they got it from their mother or around what we call this perinatal period, just before they're born and just after they're born. Let's talk a little bit about that and, and how are those people doing? Uh, is there anything different that they have to go through, their special needs? Sure. F oh, fortunately, very few of them are being born these days. Yeah. Last year in New York State, 2012, there are only, a, my understanding is, three individuals, three babies born mm -hmm. in New York State infected with HIV, while there are many more who might have had HIV positive mothers. Mm -hmm. Transmission is, is almost, almost completely conquered, and that, that's a real success story um, yes. in the battle against HIV and AIDS, and something that we need to maintain, just mm -hmm. because we conquer something doesn't mean it's time to cut all the, the programming right. and move on. Right. We have to maintain it. Right. Um, so there are very few babies being born and very few young children with HIV. But from, from 15, 20 years ago, we mm -hmm. have an aging cohort of, of adolescents, young adults with HIV, many whom um, have never even needed to be on medication, mm -hmm. have, have, have gone their whole lives without being on medication. Um, and that's a good thing for them. Mm -hmm. um, they then somewhat become a poster child for long-term survival right. with HIV and AIDS. But but um, many of them, many of them are on medication and, and do quite well. Mm -hmm. There is a subset of that population that is very fatalistic, mm -hmm. and um, they've been on medication, heavy medical treatment their whole lives. Mm -hmm. um, they've lost many members of their family to mm -hmm. HIV and AIDS. Um, some of them being raised by grandmothers and mm -hmm. great grandmothers, so they they lose the their parental figure to just old age, mm -hmm. as well. So a lot of them. A lot of them become very fatalistic, and it's very difficult to work with some of these young folks, um, getting them to um, maintain the life yeah. sentence yeah. Uh, now, and stay alive. If you don't mind, now, one of the main reasons why we're having such a drop in these babies being born with HIV is this due to the what we call antiretroviral medications that the mothers are being put on during the time that they're having, that they're pregnant, it's, and that's it's, protecting it's the It's a babies? combination of things, and that's one of the, the linchpins of, of the strategy is putting women on um, HIV treatment um, early on in, in pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of uh, HIV testing and screening that goes right. on of pregnant women, um, not known to be HIV positive. So mm -hmm. women are tested both um, during the first trimester, the first three months of pregnancy, mm -hmm. as well as the last three months. They're tested a second time as one of one of the most um, the easiest ways to pass HIV from mother to baby is during early infection. So mm -hmm. if the mother gets infected while she's already pregnant, right. Um, she's, she's very infectious to that baby if she doesn't know her status. Um, so it's the medication, mm -hmm. um, a lot of, of HIV testing of pregnant women, and, mm -hmm. and just 
staying re staying engaged in prenatal care. Right, is and, and that's important. done the most importantly during the period of time towards the end of her pregnancy. If they catch it just then, that's when it's kind of worse for the baby. Mm -hmm. to catch that's it when that's when it's the easiest for the baby, the baby to, to catch, catch it. it. And then when the baby is born, they have treatment. They immediately start to give the baby. So if the that would be for the, the first case, six right? weeks of life. Right, and some very close and careful monitoring, I would imagine as yes. well. Right, yes. right. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about some of the other population that you're treating. You've got your gay, your bisexual, your transgender. What kind of special services are you offering? And I understand you have some wonderful programs and things that you've yes. been doing too. So let's let's talk a little bit about that. So let's something well, else. Well, we, we deal with a lot of marginalized youth. Mm -hmm. While we like to welcome any youth, mm -hmm. um, the youth that feel the most unwelcome in a lot of places mm -hmm. and most marginalized are the ones that, that end up being at the highest risk. There's a lot of issues around okay. self-worth and self-esteem. Right. Um, in particular, young, young black and Latino gay men or young men who have sex with men who mm -hmm. may not identify as, as gay and young... Um, yeah, MSM, right? MSM mm -hmm. is, is the term. And some people find the term MSM offensive, that, mm -hmm. that somehow their behavior has become their identity. Mm -hmm. Men having sex with men is not their identity. No. It's a behavior... Yeah that describes how someone gets HIV, but it, it, it's almost become an identity. And some people, some people find that, that, that term, when it's used as an identity, mm -hmm. is very offensive. Mm -hmm. um, I like to throw it out there because this is a common yes. term that's used in so that people understand it, it, why you don't want to use these types of terms. Right. You know? it's, it's, it's a good term when properly used, ah. you know, so, so, you know, it, it, it shouldn't replace a person's identity. Mm -hmm. As a friend who works in community-based organizations said, it, it robs us of our humanity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so uh, we serve that, that population as, as a lot of the young people I talk with, they, they kind of get like the, a triple whammy thrown, thrown at them. Um, you know, they feel marginalized as, as young black people mm -hmm. by the larger white society. Um, so th they're already outsiders mm -hmm. um, within the black community. Mm -hmm. They feel outsiders because of their sexual preferences mm -hmm. or their sexual identity. Mm -hmm. um, so they don't know where to go. And then all of a sudden, you throw HIV into the mix, mm -hmm. and you know yeah, it really seems know. like there's 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 nowhere to go at all. So 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 when these young guys come in to us for treatment, we're working with a, a lot of those, a lot of those issues and we, we run um, a program that, that's actually in existence um, in lots of places that serve black gay men called Many Men, Many Voices, which oh, okay. deals with, um, you know, those, those multiple, multiple marginalizing um, uh, issues for, for them um, and kind of re rebuilding a sense of self and, and self pride and, and identity so that, so that person has self-worth, they will want to take care of themselves. It's very, it's very, very important. It yeah. seems to me that today um, that people in general are a lot more understanding and tolerant of the gay, bisexual uh, community. Um, uh, do you feel that this is something that's becoming more of a trend, as though more people are more comfortable about expressing who they are, especially in the teen population, or is it still I, I think pervasive I think overall, Overall, society is, is more accepting, mm -hmm. but among young people, coming out to your family, yes. coming out, you know, if, if they're, if they're um, coming from a church-based family, mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of issues around that. Um, so we deal, we deal with that and, and gaining support. Mm -hmm. um, we find a lot of, of young guys are involved in what's called the house ball community. What's this? Um, yes, what's this the, about? The, the Sounds house, like fun. The house, <laughs> the house ball community actually is a lot of fun. If you've ever been to a ballroom event, um, uh -huh. they're, they're quite, quite something to be seen. Um, young people are involved in what's called the kiki scene. Um, there's a young people's house ball community, and then there's an older folks' house ball community. It's a sense of community largely for, for black and Latino gay men, mm -hmm. um, but not exclusively to men. Mm -hmm. um, not exclusively to gay people either. Mm -hmm. um, and they um, find alternative sense of community by mm -hmm. joining these houses oh, um, okay. where they have house mothers and house fathers, and there's leadership roles. Support. And, and mutual support of, of, of each other and, and, and their identity. Mm -hmm. And they, the houses 
compete against each other in dance and fashion competitions mm -hmm. called balls right. and a particular type of, of dance called voguing, which was made yes. made famous by Madonna. Yes. <laughs> um, and um, uh, and these events mm -hmm. are a place where we go to them. Mm -hmm. We go to the ball. Sometimes mm -hmm. we, we sponsor balls. We offer HIV testing. We mm -hmm. offer um, access to, mm -hmm. to services. And within the ballroom community, mm -hmm. there's a lot of stigma around HIV because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the young folks gain stature and status within ah, the community okay. through through the, the competitions. And, and it's, it's still such a taboo to be HIV positive um, among, among the ballroom community that, that, that coming out about yeah. being HIV positive is something that, that doesn't come too easily to well, them. Well, when you think about it today, there's so many services and so it, it's almost something you would think, it doesn't have to happen because we have so much education, not, not only just from services like HEAT program, but just in general. We see commercials, we're you know, inundated with all kinds of things in the media about what to do, how to protect yourself, and all that kind of stuff. And it's what you're talking about with the ball. This is a culture. The music, people have to understand it's truly a, a culture, a way of living that, you know, they can be amongst themselves and feel comfortable and just relax and just kind of be who they are without really having feeling as though they're being judged by anybody and just dance and have a good time. So uh, that's, that's really a wonderful, wonderful thing. So when you talk a little bit about you going to these young men and young women. How else do you get out this information? Do you go to schools? At what level do you come? Do you do high school? Do you do junior high school level? We, colleges? We, we, we will go as young as middle school. Uh -huh. The younger you go, the more concerns principals, teachers, and parents mm -hmm. may have about exactly what we're saying yes. and, and how explicit we are. Mm -hmm. So so we, we do our best to respect um, those those limitations. Mm -hmm. The older the group is, the easier it is to, mm -hmm. to um, to do that, I mean, we'll literally go anywhere yeah. mm -hmm. um, uh, to bring bring our services out mm -hmm. there and to, and to do outreach. We have young staff who work for us. We have outreach staff that mm -hmm. do um, community engagement. Members of the different community sectors mm -hmm. that 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 we serve, um, and they bring certain skills with um, you know graphics that we put on our posters. Mm -hmm. It speaks the language and looks like it's coming from the mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. So for, for me being a complete outsider to a lot of mm -hmm. the communities that I serve, um, you have to be present and you, ha and right. you have to have a program with staff that, that, that represents the people that, that you're serving. So that, that's very important in who we choose to, to so, work with. So the, the people program. when they come, you, you have these young people, are they also acting as counselors? Are they speaking with other young people? And I'm imagining round table sessions where people are discussing about issues that are happening with them and counseling, you know, that kind of thing? Are they doing something like that? Well, a lot of times we'll use the term peer youth advocate. That's a popular job title mm -hmm. in, in the program is, is peer youth advocate. Um, we use young people to work as, as uh, peer navigators, how to get from Agency A to SUNY Downstate oh. Medical Center okay. um, to come in for services. So we use a lot of people for, for escorts. Sometimes you got to send somebody out into the community to, yeah. to go fishing for them, yeah, and, and, them and, and, and and rope them in. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people disappear on us. There, you know, there's a lot of fear mm -hmm. associated with facing up to a lot of the health issues. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the young people um, are trained to go out and bring them in and provide support if they're not ready to come in, Good. just to remain in in, in contact. Um, there's some of that, that roundtable group discussion that, that, that goes on. A lot of that mm -hmm. is, is structured with specific prevention group criteria mm -hmm. uh, or curriculum uh, that, that, that we use to address certain health issues that affect a certain population. Mm -hmm. This weekend we're starting um, a, a group for um, transgender girls called Just One of the Girls. Ah. Um, like these are individuals born biologically male but live as females and, mm -hmm. and may either be on hormones or starting hormones. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them are HIV positive, some are not. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Uh, it's still very important because yes. all of these young people, really what they need and what they're looking for always is, is acceptance. Okay, And I guess the big picture is for them to get the services that they need as soon as possible, to know that the service is out there and 
hopefully when people see this program, they'll pass the word along because I'm sure everybody knows somebody who could use a little help or somebody who's afraid or whatever. Why don't you tell people where they can get the information, how do they get in touch with the HEAT program? That's what they really need to know The right youth now. who come to us are, are the best form of outreach themselves. Okay. They, mm -hmm. all, they tend to bring their, their friends, mm -hmm. boyfriends, girlfriends, that ah, sort of thing. So it's kind of an each one, teach one, to kind of string it, yeah, one person In the best another. of circumstances, you know, yeah. I guess that helps with the exclusivity and, and making sure that everything is, is uh, uh, above board and that that confidentiality is really kept there so that's probably really the best way to do it any last words that you want to get out to the viewing audience about your program if they're a young person watching this show uh -huh. get tested for HIV yeah. you can um, get tested in lots of places but um, if you want to come to the heat program we will treat you really well um, our phone number is 718-467-4446. Tell them again. 718-467-4446. Um, our website is um, www.heatprogram.org. Mm -hmm. um, and um, if you just happen to show up on our doorstep and we didn't know you were coming in advance, mm -hmm. we will test you that day. Well, that, that's good, too. Dr. Birnbaum, I really must thank you very much thank for, you for having and me. talking to us about this today. Very, very important topics for our young people out there today. You don't have to be afraid. There's always a place to go, somebody to talk to you about your issues, your problems, your concerns. Grab a friend, bring them to the SUNY Downstate Heat Program, and let them get the help and the care that they need. This is a very important important situation today. We can only protect ourselves, so you have to be out there looking out for yourself. There's somebody else to help look out for you if you need the help. The HEAT program at SUNY Downstate. This has been Julie Black for Health Center at SUNY Downstate Medical Center. Thank you for watching.